What's up guys, my name is Emmanuel and this is Moki Shopping YouTube channel. Today's video oh, is very, very interesting. And so I would entreat you to be patient with this video today. Take your time, stay with us to the end. For, I mean, the most important thing is if you get to understand today's video very very well you will never ever have an issue with these blenders here and so i'm entreating you to be patient watch this video to the end and understand everything we want to show you and when you do it is going to be very very uh useful to you again i'm also going to play with you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't click on the red button down there to subscribe and when you're done there is a bell icon right beside it click on it as well so that you'll be notified anytime we post a video now what do you have to show today this is a commercial blender or two different types or brands of commercial you know blender here they are all from Silvercrest, anyway. But this is 8,000 watts, and this is 4,500 watts. Now, those of you who have bought this blender and have had an issue with it, this video is for you. It's going to help you to understand properly how to use it very well so that you will not encounter any issue with it going forward. Now, if you have bought it and you've not had any issue yet, yet, then please, this video also is for you. Take your time, watch you understand it properly so that you will not have any issue when using it. If you are someone who is yet to buy it, you are considering to buy one of these blenders, this video is also for you. So please, you also have to take your time and watch this video thoroughly to understand how it is used so that you know you know you 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 get to buy one now i've told you that in our previous videos these blenders come in different kind of watts or versions so this is the 8000 watts this is the 4500 watts there's 1800 watts there is 2000 watts okay there is 5000 watts there is 5,500 watts, there is 7,000 watts, and so far, this is the highest watts we have here at Morky Shopping, and this is 8,000 watts. Now, aside the wattage, they also come, uh, the versions of the letters are different. So, this uh, container here, or the jar, or whatever you want to call it. People call it blender, the main blender. People call it the jar. People call it the cup, okay? This is three liters, three liters. This one, okay, this one is 2.2 liters. There are some that are 2.5 liters, and there are some that are two liters. But here, this one is 2.2 liters. Each one of these come with a small jar. People call it Miller. People call it small jar, just like I said. People call it small blender, okay? People call it crusher. Whatever you want to call it, it comes along with it. So this one, the 8,000 watts with the three liters come with the small Miller. And then the 4,500 watts with the 2.2 liters also come with one small miller, all right? Now, the purpose of today's video is to take you through all the common issues, all the common issues that come with these blenders. Again, take your time. If you don't have data or bundle or internet, then don't you know rush to watch it now. Take your time and get internet watch to the end and fully understand how to use this blender 
so that you don't get any problem. Now, the first problem I want to talk about is the use of the buttons. What do I mean? You can see right here with the 8000 watts that it has two buttons here and a controller in the middle. Also, with the 4,500 watts, you can also see two buttons here and a controller in the middle. If you don't use these buttons appropriately, you will have an issue with this blender. How do you use the buttons? Now, this button, the one on the right, the button on the far right, is meant for crushing down the food items you are blending into smaller particles because it has the highest speed. Mostly, this side, I mean this button here, it doesn't lock. This side, when you press on it, it locks. This side, it doesn't lock. So when you press on it and you take your hand off, it goes back. The reason is, it's meant to crush down the food items you are blending into smaller particles. So for instance, you are blending something that has been loaded a little bit, okay? If you are blending tomatoes, you are blending um, onions, or you are blending hard substances like dry maize, dry beans, okay? And then you realize that the items are loaded a little bit. You crush it down with this button. And when you're crushing it down, it will give you the sound, vroom, 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 all right? Let me do a practical scenario for you, right? So, using this side, you realize, <laughs> Let's try this one too. So, just like you saw, you press on it, you release your hand, all right, vroom, 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 to break down the food items you are blending into smaller particles. Then when you are done, you now press on this side to on, then... That's how you use it. So if the food item you are blending is that heavy, it's loaded, you blend it down, into smaller particles with this side then you press this one down then you control it with the middle to now finish off your blending that is how the buttons are used but note something whenever you're using this side make sure this side is off the use of this side is different totally from the use of this side so don't say I'm putting it on before I use this side no put it at off then you decide. Then when you're done breaking the food items down into particles, smaller particles, then you now on this side and control it with the middle. That is how, that is how the buttons are used. The question is, what will happen if you don't do it this way? This is the motto that is inside the blender, okay? Now, you can see there are two coils, one on this side, one on this side. So the likelihood of you not following that procedure is you may likely burn one side of the motto. So you realize that over time, this side will be working, but this side will not be working. Or this side will be working, but this side will not be working. So for those of you who have used this blender and are facing that challenge, one side is working, the other side is not working, the likelihood is that you didn't use it according to how we've showed you. Break the food items down with the higher speed with this side, then come and use this side to now finish off your blending. If not, you will burn the motor. Now when the motor is burnt, you would have to buy one and it costs a little bit to get one.
Um, so that is the first common issue we have found with this blender. Let's go to the second issue we have found with the blender. Now, the second issue you want to look at is the jar. The use of the jar. Now, you realize that unlike the traditional blenders, the um, old blenders, okay, there was a lock on the jar so that when you put it on the blender like this, you twist it and it will lock. So those of you who are having Binaton, uh, Minimax, those kind of old uh, brands of blenders or those blenders that are not commercial, you realize that you put the jar on it, you turn it and it will lock. This one is not like that. When you put it on it, that is that. So what it means is whenever you are blending, don't just put in the food items and leave to go and do something else. No. When I owned it, you realize that it has a very, very high speed. Now, if you leave it to go and do something else, there are one or two issues that will happen. First issue is the blender may by itself fall down. If you are blending on a slippery tile, if your kitchen is that slippery, this blender may fall down somewhere. Two, the jar, when you are blending, it will be doing something like this. Okay? And so it will pour something inside there. I'm going to show you that. That will be my third issue. When you are blending and you're not standing by it, to put your hand on top. So whenever you are blending, put your hand on top and hold the handle. Okay? So you are blending, you, you use it like this. Then your hand remains firmly on top to fully grip the jar on the motor. So please, that is how you use the jar. Whether it's a big jar here or it is a small jar, whenever you are blending, put your hand on top. Don't just leave it because there's no lock around it. Whether it is the 4,500 watts you are blending with or it is the 8,000 watts, put it on it, put your hand on top. That is how we use the jar. Now, if you don't do that, what is the issue that you will likely face? That is what I'm going to talk about. The first issue you also face, aside, um, of course, the second issue rather, the first issue I've told you that the blender may fall down. The second issue, if you don't do that, is this metal here will be deteriorating. So those of you who have gone to see your blender having some small, small metal particles, it's because of that. So it will be deteriorating. Secondly, there is something in here, we call it teeth, okay? It's like um, some metallic teeth inside there that hold the blender and turns it around to make your food blend, okay? This is a sample of it. This is a sample. What will happen is, if you don't follow what we are teaching you, these teeth will be deteriorating. Now, when it deteriorates, okay, what it means is that it will not have the strength to fully turn your blade to blend your food for you, okay? It wouldn't have the strength to fully turn this blade to blend your food for you. So please, when you are blending, when you put the jar on top, put your hand on it to firmly insert that metal inside this teeth inside here so that it can fully turn the blade for you so that it would not make it deteriorate. All right? So that is another issue we have found with the blender. The first issue we have told you is the use of the buttons. The second issue we are saying is that whenever you are blending, put your hand on top so that it can firmly be gripped. Don't leave it to go and attend to something else. If you think you want to go and attend to something else, maybe your seal or your soup or your baby is crying or your husband or your wife, I mean, there's a visitor or whatever, then off it. Go and attend to the thing and come back and finish it. Okay? It has a very high speed. So anytime you are blending with it, stand with it and put your hand 
on top of the jar. That is the second issue we have found with this blender. Let's go to the third issue. Now, the third issue we have found with this blender, which a lot of you may be facing, is the blender or the jar may be leaking. So you pour your food particles in and you realize that it's leaking. Now, note something. This jar is unbreakable. When you put it down or it falls down, it doesn't break. It's unbreakable. So, if the leakage is coming from anywhere around it, then that is a big issue. Because it's unbreakable. So, if it's unable to break, then it means you have to get a new jar. However, if the leakage is coming from down here, then there's no problem. Why am I saying that? Now, whenever you turn your blender, the under here, you can see this metallic thing. There are words written on it. You see open and close. What it means is this thing here is openable. You can open it. The reason why it was made to be opened is that, you know, this one is used to blend food particles or food items. You are blending tomatoes with it. You are blending your onions with it. You are blending your maize with it. You are blending, you know, all other food items that need to be blended inside it. So definitely, you expect that some of the food items will be left, the leftover will be inside there, even though you wash it. But, you know, you know, any one of you who have used a blender for a long time understand what I'm saying. That definitely, there will be food items left over inside. Okay? And it is advisable that once in a while, you have to open the down here to clean the blender thoroughly, the blade thoroughly. And that's why they made this place openable and closed. Now, so when it's leaking, what it means is this thing here has not been closed properly. That's why it is leaking. So if it's leaking from down, there's no problem. All that you have to do, if only you can, okay, is to use plier. Turn it to the open, okay, be twisting this thing to the open. Don't use your, your hand because sometimes it's locked firmly. So use a plier, twist it to open it. When you open, fix it back. But when you're fixing it back, take your time so that it can balance very well. So fix it back and tighten it properly with a plier. That is all. Your leakage has stopped. The leakage can also happen to the small jar. The same thing. It has a ring here, open it and fix it again and your leakage will stop. The 8000 watts had the same thing, open and close. This one, open it, fix it back, and close it firmly. That is all. Your leakage is gone. Okay? So that is another issue we have found with the blender. However, if you cannot fix it yourself, then you may have to carry it to a technician who would have the capacity and the tools to do it for you. If you call us at Moki Shopping too, we can help you to fix that place so that your leakage will stop. That is another issue we have found with the blender. Let's go to the next issue with the blender. Now, the next issue you have to look at. This is very, very important. This is very, very important. Again, if you have not subscribed to the channel, take this opportunity to subscribe for us. And then all the videos we'll show you on all other products we sell here at Moki Shopping, you can get to see video of it. You may not even buy it from us. You may have gone to buy it somewhere else, but our videos may be useful to you. So please subscribe to the channel so that you'll be notified anytime you post a video. Now, the next issue is the wattage. Now, what does the wattage mean? The wattage tells you the power, the capacity of the blender, the power of the blender. It's just like engine, car engine. We have some that the engine is big and so it can go longer distances and it absorbs more petrol. Okay, I'm giving you similarities here. So those of you who have cars or who have bought cars or who are into cars, you know that when a car has a bigger engine capacity, the speed is higher, it goes far and longer distances and it takes more fuel. The cars with the smaller engines, all right, it doesn't go longer distances and then it takes fewer fuels or smaller volume of fuel, okay? The same thing applies to this. 
Now, we told you from the beginning that this is 4,500 watts and this is 8,000 watts. The critical thing you must look at is where are you plugging the socket? Now, this power cable of the blender, the question is where are you tapping your power source from? This is a bigger issue with the blender, but a lot of you are not aware of. That's what I'm saying that this is very, very important. And so I'm taking my time to explain this to you. Okay. The question is, do you know that where you are tapping the power source from, the connection, the power connection there is good? When you went to rent your apartment or when you built your apartment, did you know that the connections to your kitchen or wherever you be tapping your blenders, microwaves, and all those machines from, were you particular about the power cable that was used for the connections? If you were not, then I'm advising you from now to be particular about it. Because if the power source coming into the blender is not big enough, it's not high enough for the capacity of the blender, it can be working for you. But over time, the blender will break down. So you will call your seller or your supplier and say, hey, your blender is not good. I'm not, I'm not loving it. I use it for a short time that's broken down. Please, please, please. It's because perhaps where you are tapping the power from, there's a problem there. Now, do you know that the connection of the power sockets on the wall, there are cables that are used and some are lower cables. We have two mm cables, we have one mm cable, and we have four mm cables. Each cable or whatever cable that was used determines the kind of power that it brings to that socket. And so where you are tapping it from, if the cable that was used there is a smaller version of cables or it's not even high quality, you will spoil the blender. And so our advice is if you really, 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 really want to use these blenders for a long time, then when you go to your rented apartment, take your time and call in an electrician to check the power source for you. Before you tap, you dedicate that part, huh? before you dedicate that socket for your blender. Okay? Or if you can, install new power lines. 4mm one, that can give you higher wattage of power so that you can use your blenders, your microwaves and your fridges for that. Okay? That's very, very important. And so, in this video, I'll be showing you samples, okay? I'll be showing you samples of the power sockets that I'm talking about. So, as you can see, this is one socket found in a kitchen, okay? This socket was made with a 2mm cable. Is it good for blenders? Not really. But it depends on the kind of cable that was used, okay? This is another socket that was made in the same kitchen. This was made with a very, very high capacity cable. Is it good for blenders and microwaves? Yes, because it was made with a very, very high capacity cable. Now, another thing is some of you also use extension cable. Is it good to use extension cable for your blenders or your microwaves? Yes and no. Yes, if only. It is yes, if only. Number one, the power socket where this extension is taking its power source from is good. That's the first thing. Number two, this extension has higher watts, more than the blender. Note that very well. The question is, how many of you even know the wattage of your extension? You went to the mall and you bought the extension cable without even checking whether it has 1000 watts, 800 watts or 4000 watts or whatever. You, don't, you didn't check. You just bought the extension because it has a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of power sockets. You just bought it. Now, somebody will also say, oh, the extension works with my TV. So I thought it was okay. Please, a lot of TVs has, <laughs> a lot of them actually have lower, lower, lower watts, okay? So that even when the current is very low, the TV can still work. 
okay so don't compare tv with these blenders these blenders are higher wattage blenders okay so this one is 4500 watts so if the extension you are using for it is not more than 4500 watts you will spoil this blender i'm repeating this blender here is 8000 watts so if you choose to use an extension cable that it is not up to 8,000 watts and or even more than 8,000 watts, you will spoil the motto of this blender. And so what is the advice? The advice to you is have a dedicated wall power socket where you directly tap your power from. But that one I said dedicated means that you took your time calling an electrician to check for you. Because when he went to rent the house, he didn't know how they, you know, they wired the place. I'm repeating. What you have to do is call in an electrician to check for you. Okay? That the power socket where you are tapping your power source from for the blenders is efficient enough for the blenders. If not, you spoil the blenders. Now, you can use it for some time. You think you are okay. But the, the motor is spoiling bit by bit. The time will come, it will not work again. So those of you who sometimes call in and say, oh, I was using my blender in about a month time, in two months time, in three months time, in one year time, it has spoiled. It's because you've not dedicated a power socket for it, which is efficient enough for it. It's because perhaps you're using an extension that has lower wattage than the blender. So please note this point. This is the next issue you have found with it and we hope you are enjoying the video. Let's go into uh, the final issue with the blender, then we are done with this video. Now, the blender must be cleaned. Now, it comes with this. Now, we are, I'm saying this is an issue because um, one client actually brought um, um, his blender to us to service. And when it came, the nature of the blender, please, you will spoil it. You will spoil the blender, okay? Please, it comes with this. This is called gum, okay? The purpose of it is to hold off the jar, like this, okay? Normally, it is fixed on it. Once in a while, please clean it. Clean the blender, okay? So, you must take note of this. This one is rubber, but it can break. So, when you are blending your food items, it drops on it, you ignore it. It drops on it, you ignore it. A time will come, it will break. But if it breaks and you call us, we will get some for you, but it's not cheap, okay? This is 20 Ghana cities. This is 20 Ghana cities. I told you about the teeth. Now the teeth is now very expensive. It's very, very expensive now, and it's even limited in stock, okay? So please, get note of this, and follow the proceedings very, very well. And then you will not have any issue with the blender. There's something I missed. And I left it for the final video. Those of you who watch the end can enjoy this, okay? So if by now you are still watching the video, you have, you have done well, okay? By staying with us to the end. Is the use of these two jars. I in intentionally left it to the end. It's a bonus. Now, please, know this one very well. Know this one very, very well. Note it very, very well. It's very, very important. Please. If you are blending hard substances, dry substances, use only this one. Use only this one. Don't say, oh, I want to blend everything quickly. Oh, I need, I need to load it. So this is bigger enough for it. No. Hard substances put pressure on the motor. So if you load this, if you use this one and you load it too much, it will put more pressure and your motor will get bent. Okay, so please use this for hard substances, for dry maize, for dry beans, okay? Anything dry that you are blending, use this one and then you put it on it. Because it's a small, the load will not be too much on the blender and then you are good to go. Then use this for all your soft substances. I hope you have loved the video. I hope you have enjoyed it. These are the common issues we have found with this blender. 
you have been in business for quite a while and so we hear you out we hear your problems and we investigate we find solutions we call the factory we listen to their solution and then we come and display it to you that is the more reason why you must subscribe to the channel it is not only this every single kitchen item that we sell here at monkey shopping every single electronic item every single clothing every shoe anything that we know that we have to do a video of it for you to show you how it is used we'll do a video of it for you so please subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you'll be notified anytime we post a video i hope you have loved it and i hope you're going to stay with us this is Moki shopping youtube channel and thank you for watching stay tuned for more bye bye Moki.